When transcribing, some words will require more individual attention than others. This step addresses methods that can help you decipher unidentifiable words. Type out the letters you can identify using ellipses as placeholders for ones you cannot. Not only does this give us a sense of shape of the word, but also helps us identify what factors render the word unrecognizable, be it variant spellings, letter shapes, or lack of context. Lack of standardized spelling is one of the most difficult aspects of transcription. Use the following methods to make it easier. Look at the overall shape of the word or interchange similar letters, especially vowels. In the Consider Context of Content video, we saw the example of castle spelt as C-A-S-T-E-L. In this instance, we can see the shape of Phineas's castle is similar to the shape of its accurate spelling, only with the last two letters transposed. Here's a letter written by Phineas to his second wife, Alice, concerning the management of their estate and assets. Let's focus on the last line in the postscript. At first glance, this word is unclear. I'll type my initial guess using an ellipsis for uncertain characters and move on. I can tell this word is mindful by looking at its shape. Notice how the characters M, I, and N become hard to distinguish individually and how you cannot always rely on dots to identify eyes. Also, consider how similar these pen strokes look to those we were not certain about in our previous word. After attempting I, M, and N in our uncertain word, we arrive at C, O, Z, I, N, S. This doesn't mean anything at first, but let's apply a helpful transcription method, pronunciation. Before spellings were standardized, writers spelled words based on their pronunciation. For this reason, try saying the words aloud. What word do you think sounds similar to cousins? Place your guess in a bracket correction. To confirm, let's transcribe the rest of the line. For this word, my initial guess is C-O-U-R-E-R-N-S. Neither pronunciation nor word shape give me any clues, so let's look at the individual letters. I'm fairly certain about C-O, but the next character requires another method, find a familiar figure. Similar to how mindful helped with our other uncertain word, look for other examples of the letter in words you've already transcribed. Look at how other U's meet the baseline, the line which runs along the bottom of the words, in a more rounded shape, while our character in question is more pointed. In the word until, we can see how similar the U and N are but with slight differences. Let's change our U to an N for now and continue transcribing. Now let's look for other examples of R. Looking at words such as sorry, pasture, indifferent, and further order, we can see a character that starts with either a loop or a sharp peak, a short downward slanting pen stroke, a leg, and a foot. These R's more closely resemble a modern day cursive R, while our character in question more closely resembles a modern day print R. Now that we have ruled out R as a candidate for this word, Let's scan the document for other characters that do look similar. 
we have this one here in Buckingham, a word I am certain is transcribed properly based on the letter's context. By changing the R to a C, you can see that sometimes the difference between unrecognizable and readable is only a few letters. To confirm your transcriptions, consider how the words fit within the context and content of the document. Phineas's location in Philadelphia and Alice's in Bucks County tell us that he was away for business or on official duties in the city, while she remained to manage the estate. Because the content concerns estate management, a postscript addressing concerns from family members makes sense. Once you discern an unknown word, it's important to use another transcription method, compare and contrast, both to further confirm your transcription and to become more familiar with letter shapes of the period. Consider what characters were initially misleading and why. Initially, we transcribed these characters as you are. Use examples found throughout the document to identify how the characters are alike and how they are different. Look for similar instances of both the incorrect and correct characters throughout the document. In the word further, you are both together and individually, differs from our misidentified characters. The word until shows U and N next to one another. We can see how the dip between the downstroke and upstroke of N might appear as the bend of a U, potentially leading to misidentification. Contrasting the incorrect R against correct instances of R demonstrates the reason for misidentification modern ideas of a letter's shape. The compare and contrast method helps train your transcriber eye to recognize instances of potential misidentification and, when necessary, to override modern concepts of letter shapes. When using this method, try to find instances of letters that are located in similar parts of a word. In some hands, the placement of characters within a word changes how the characters are written. Looking at Phineas's hand, T and H at the beginning of the word resemble our modern idea of these letter shapes. However, when ending a word with H, Phineas uses a completely different shape, one less familiar to modern eyes, but more familiar to medieval scribes, known as scribal or manuscript abbreviation. If there are no other instances, use print search to look for completed transcriptions by the same hand. If you are unable to identify the word, consult a crossword or anagram solver, such as whatsthisword.com or crosswordsolver.org. This will not always work. Use it only in conjunction with the other methods and to provide clarity. Inputting C O Z question mark question mark S returns cousins a word with the wrong definition for our context, but one that is useful for our pronunciation step. Additionally, looking at a list of potential word permutations helps you visualize the different possibilities for missing letters and how these letter shapes compare to the characters you are unsure of. Keep in mind that writers often use different spellings of the same word, sometimes even in the same correspondence. In this letter, Roger Longworth used two different spellings of yearly within lines of each other. It will become easier to identify words, regardless of their variant spellings, as you build upon your base of information and gain a wider understanding of both the context and contents of the documents. Common throughout the letters are abbreviations of the and that. They consist of two parts. A thorn, which appears as a modern Y but represents a TH, and a superscript letter, usually an E or T, that determines the word's meaning.
a thorn followed by E usually signifies the. This has fallen out of use over the centuries, but you can still see it today in store names stylized as ye old shop. While a thorn combined with E is primarily used to write the, it can also signify they. A thorn followed by T signifies that. Which is another common abbreviation. It is often written as WCH, although this is not standardized. Because a lowercase 17th century C letter shape can resemble an R, abbreviations for which might appear as WRH. Similar to which is our next abbreviation, with. It appears as a W, followed by a superscript TH. Because T and C have similar letter shapes and are often used interchangeably, which and with can easily be confused. Use context clues to determine the right word. Another common abbreviation is received, appearing as R, C, D. In this video, we used our steps of finding familiar figures, comparing and contrasting, and learning pronunciation in order to break down words, help you understand individual letter shapes, and recognize how they were used with one another. Becoming more familiar with individual letter shapes and words can help you identify abbreviations as you encounter them through the transcription process. Additionally, you can consult the transcription manual for more examples. By following these steps, words, and eventually letters, will become much more manageable and easier to transcribe.